Hello and welcome to an Inside Owl Athletics interview. I'm Logan Peranto. Today I'm joined by Keene State College men's basketball coach Ryan Kane. The Owls are num ranked number 14 in the nation and are off to a 7-0 start this season. Coach, thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. Pleasure. Last year the team reached the second round of the NCAA tournament. How did that experience translate to what you have this year? Yeah, I think it's really important to get the opportunity to play in the postseason. Um, you know, last year, obviously, in the first round, I think we probably played about as good of a game as we could play against a really good Swarthmore team. You know, historically, one of the you know, perennial powers in the country, you know, a team that's advanced to you know, the national championship game in recent years. So to go to their place and beat them in their gym against a team that was pretty veteran overall, um, you know, really good experience for us. But then to come out and play the way we did in the second round and not show up and play, you know, to the best of our ability, I think that definitely set the standard for our season this year. You know, the emphasis is really every day bringing it at a level, um, you know, getting to a level and staying at a level uh, that is as high of a level as we can play at. You know, and if we can do that on a daily basis, then I think what we'll be able to know going into, you know, postseason play this year, if we're fortunate enough to get back to that point to play in the NCAA tournament, that we have an expectation, we know exactly how we're going to play in those moments, and there's not going to be as much variability game to game. You know, last year was tough in the sense that we had zero opportunities to play back-to-back -back all year long. You know, and already this season we went out to Indiana and had a chance to play back-to-back. -back. Uh, really important experience for our guys, and one that I think our guys really rallied around after the struggles that we had in the NCAA tournament last year. Um, you know, so definitely the foundation for us, you know, I think it's, Given our guys a taste as to what postseason play looks like, um, you know, our goal is to you know, win a national championship. You know, and I think without having an opportunity to play in the NCAA tournament, it's unrealistic to set that type of goal in your program. But you know, our guys have seen what it looks like to play in the tournament. Uh, they've followed the tournament very closely, understand the type of teams that are playing late in March, um, and know, I, I think, some of the details that it takes to get to that point. Um, and it really revolves around getting better every day and playing at that level every day. Um, a lot of guys you have on last year's team are also on this year's team. So did you expect at this point uh, to be where you were at at this point, seven games into the season? You know, I, I don't think, uh, I mean, our, our goal is to win every game. You know, um, that's probably not realistic. You know, it's likely at some point that you lose a game, right, um, or several games. Um, who knows? It all depends on how we do what we do. Uh, but I think we knew if we played to our abilities that we have a chance to win every night that we go out there. You know, the ball doesn't always bounce your way. You're not always able to make the plays down the stretch that you need to make to win games. Uh, but we knew if we played at the level that we were capable of playing at, that we'd have some success. You know, the you know, national ranking that goes with it, we talked about it the first day of practice. You know, we do have goals of trying to win every time we go out there. We do have goals of trying to win a national championship. Um, and if we're you know, able to play at that level and have the type of success that we're capable of playing, uh, uh, type of success that we're capable of having, if we play at that level consistently, then along with that will come you know, national rankings and some level of success uh, relative to wins and losses. So you know, I wouldn't say we're surprised to be 7-0, but I think we're fortunate to be 7-0. Uh, we've made enough plays to get there, and I think we've played well enough consistently in terms of the level that we've showed up and played at and the ability to stay at that level through games. Yeah, and let's talk about uh, the play of the two captains, Jeff Hunter and Octavio Brito. How have they improved from last season? You know, we can start with Octavio. Um, you know, typically I think what you see in men's basketball and probably, you know, just college athletics in general is a significant jump from your first year to your second year. Uh, and that happens for a number of reasons. You know, I think guys understand what they need to work on. I think guys understand systems. They understand the level. They understand roles. They understand how their skills translate to, you know, the systems that you have in place. Um, so just from a confidence standpoint, the ability to translate your game into those systems, um, I think guys typically take a big jump from that first year to the second year. Um, obviously, it takes a special player to you know, take the type of jump that O's taken so far this year. Uh, but the impressive thing about him is the impact that he has on both ends of the floor. I think he showed that last year. You know, he was able to guard you know, our first-team All-American player in Marcus Azor in the conference championship game one-on-one. -on -one. Um, and we, you know, openly told them we're going to have very little help. You're going to basically play them one-on-one -on -one and good luck and did a tremendous job, you know, contained them pretty much all game and then guarded, you know, what was the national rookie of the year from two seasons prior in that first round of the NCAA tournament game in a very similar situation. So, you know, to his credit, he's obviously a very talented offensive player, has taken a big jump, has had a huge impact, um, you know, kind of on our team from an offensive standpoint. But, 
you know, equally as important is the role that he plays in the defensive end of the floor, and that's been something that he's kind of brought, you know, throughout his time here over his first two years so far. Um, and then obviously uh, to, to talk about those guys collectively, you know, there are captains, as you mentioned. You know, there are heart and soul guys. There are leaders. You know, I think we have lots of tremendous players that are two-way guys that do things at a high level. Um, but it's very evident when we need a big rebound who we're going to. It's very evident when there's a loose ball, um, which two guys will be the first on the floor for that loose ball. And anytime you can have your two most talented guys be the leaders in those areas, I think it sets your program up for some good success. Um, again, it's, it's team leadership, and one of the better things that those guys do as leaders is they en enable our other guys to also be leaders, to speak up and have voices um, and feel like they have as much of an impact on, a, on the leadership in our program as our captains do. Um, and then to highlight Jeff, um, you know, obviously Jeff has worked really hard in his body over his time here at Keene State. Um, he's a guy that just constantly lives in the weight room. Uh, but to see the type of jump that he's made going into his senior year, you know, we'll be fortunate to have him for a fifth year after this. So, you know, really lucky to have him around for, you know, this season and next. But, you know, his, his actual true senior year, to make the jump that he's made in terms of how hard he competes and how hard he plays is something that you don't often see. You know, you definitely see some of those jumps over the course of, you know, people's careers. But I mentioned that jump from your freshman to sophomore year. That's when you typically see something like that. And for him to be able to do that going into this season, it's really set the bar in terms of how hard you need to play for our team. Uh, just really impressed. You know, uh, his rebound rate in terms of how often he gets the ball, um, you know, it, when it comes to rebounds on balls in his area, you know, it's got to be as good as anybody in the country. Uh, you know, the physicality that it rebounds the ball, the ability to, you know, dive on the floor. You know, we're coming off a game where he probably took his first charge of his career, um, or at least the first one he actually tried to take. You know, <laughs> so that was impressive last night. Um, you know, and obviously we haven't, even, we haven't even highlighted his, you know, just skill as a basketball player. You know, his understanding of how to play. You know, he's as smart of a player as we've had. You know, Ty Nichols is a guy that comes to mind. You know, that's the school's all-time probably best player in a lot of different ways, leading scorer all-time. Um, he was a very smart player, and I put Jeff right up there with him in terms of his basketball IQ. Um, and I think that really helps our team. You know, we can communicate at a level that, you know, maybe some teams can't communicate at this time of year because Jeff is able to kind of be the leader and teach our guys what that looks like. Um, so just really impressed with both players. I know that was kind of a long uh, rant about both those guys, but I can't say enough good things about them as players, but more importantly as people and the way they represent our program on and off the court. Yes, and uh, definitely a lot of energy comes from those types of plays, from those types of guys, especially as the leaders of the team. And uh, you mentioned people that make plays on both the offensive and defensive sides of the ball that aren't named Jeff Hunter or Octavio Brito. Uh, that comes from a new addition to the team this year, uh, sophomore guard Spencer Aronson. He's currently shooting 43% from three-point range. Um, what, has his, what has his shooting brought to your offense? Yeah, we, we have really good shooters. You know, like obviously we just talked about one of them with Octavio. You know, we've had Mason in our program for a few years. He's been a starter ever since he's been a part of our program. Um, another really good shooter. We have a many, many other guys that are capable three-point shooters on our roster as well. But Spencer is as dynamic of a shooter as we've probably had in our program since I've been here. And we've had a lot of really good shooters. Um, you know, the ability to create space and make shots. And I, honestly, um, at times he, he may even dribble himself into tougher shots. Uh, but those are the shots that he's confident in taking. Um, just really impressed with his ability to, you know, get shots off against, you know, semi-contested defense and have them be real high-level great shots for our team. You know, he's got a lot of confidence, um, you know, from the coaches and from his, from his teammates, uh, and he deserves it. You know, he deserves every bit of it. Just a very capable shot maker. But, you know, you mentioned the two-way player component of that. You know, that MIT game on Saturday, I think you probably would have left the game, you know, talking about his intensity as much as you would have left talking about his shot making. You know, so, uh, in, in, you know, we mentioned IQ, Jeff being a real high IQ guy. You know, one of the things that we can highlight, too, is our new additions are real high IQ players. And they've picked up on what we do, um, you know, very easily. And it's been very easy to incorporate them into our offense and defense. Um, so impressed with as much uh, his ability to translate in those areas as we are, you know, his shooting. But there's no doubt, 
you know, the ability for a guy to make shots like that definitely takes your offense to another level. You know, when you get guys like Jeff and O that are as dynamic as they are, when you have, you know, point guards that, is quicker, that are as quick as our point guards are, when you have playmakers and shooting at the other guard spots that we have to be able to put a piece like that around and really, you know, stretch the court and give other guys more space to play because of the way they have to defend him definitely changes that dynamic of your offense. He's a guy that's also always ready to shoot, always got his hands up. Um, ready for those kicks. Yeah, he's not afraid to shoot it. We all know that so <laughs> yes. far. And uh, little, uh, the team begins Little East Conference play this weekend. Uh, what is the race in the conference look, shaping up to be this year? Yeah, we're 0-0. Zero zero, you know? um, our league is always going to be very physical. It's going to be defensive-oriented. Uh, you know, all the teams have their own styles and their own systems. Uh, going on the road to play in our league is very challenging. You know, I think we're probably three and four over my time here going to play at Southern Maine. You know, you know, we've been a team probably in the top two or three since I've been here. And, you know, there's been some years where they haven't been in the top two or three, uh, but yet it's still as hard of a place to play as anyone else. Uh, so basically the way the league works, in my opinion, is, you know, the team that's more ready to play that night is typically the team that wins that game. Uh, you know, it doesn't matter what the records are. Um, all that matters is, um, how you play in that situation on that night against the team that you're playing because, uh, you know, I think there is that level of physicality. There is that commitment to the defensive end of the floor. Um, there is, uh, you know, just teams that know how to play, you know, other teams in your league. You know, when you play each other as much as we have over the years, you definitely get a sense for, you know, how you're going to guard certain programs or certain actions that certain programs run. And there's no question that everybody in our league knows who our guys are and has an idea of what they want to do to take our guys away. So we got to be our best every night, you know, and you get that national ranking, that random number that's next to your name. Uh, that definitely puts a little bit more emphasis on making sure you're at your best. You know, when you see that number, you know, there's no doubt that teams are ready to play you. Teams are going to give you their best. And in order to consistently play at a high level, you're going to be at your best. Yeah, and uh, again, that national ranking and the defending champs of the Little East puts a target on your back for teams like Plymouth State and UMass Dartmouth, who you beat in the championship last year as well. So. Coach, thank you for joining us, and uh, the Owls begin Little East Conference play on the road, headed to the University of Southern Maine on December 3rd for a 2 p.m. tip-off.